welcome to Yoga for Life. I'm Deb, and I'll be guiding you through Triple R Week, or a restorative practice where we restore, renew, and relax. And for this practice, you're going to need a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you can use a pillow. You'll need a blanket and a block. Our uh, Sanskrit focus is Maya Tree. And Maya Tree means to extend the energy of friendliness and love. Our mudra is the classic Yana mudra, which connects us to universal wisdom. It's a very simple mudra. We bring the index finger and thumb tip together on each hand, creating a circle of unity. Remaining fingers extend out into the universe to receive the wisdom, the sage advice, and palms face up. But we're gonna start practice in a seated posture. So I invite you to come down to your mat and assume a cross leg or extended leg position. If you have a tendency to tilt back in your seated postures, then I recommend that you use a rolled blanket or a bolster to sit on the edge to tilt the hip joints forward and that takes pressure out of the low back. I'll also be sharing a poem this morning by Mary Oliver from her book, Why I Wake Early. And the title of the poem is Logos. So first we'll establish our engagement through the bandhas, the energy locks to promote pranic flow and effectiveness in our uh, power of staying poses. And then we'll um, develop ujjayi to support the bandhas. And <clears throat> then from uh, ujjayi breath, pranayama technique, our deep diaphragmatic breathing. We'll incorporate shatali, which is a cooling breath. We're in a, an extreme heat wave here in California uh, with the surrounding wildfires and poor air quality. <clears throat> so indoor practice is probably optimal at this point. But to get back to the breath technique, shatali is a cooling breath. And this is where on the inhale, we extend the tongue, roll it, and draw the air across to cool the body physically. And then on the exhale, we close the lip, or retract the tongue, close the lips, and exhale through the nose. And um, <clears throat> don't worry if you can't roll your tongue, that is a, a genetic attribute. So just stick the tongue out and draw the air across the flat tongue if you can't roll the tongue. All right, so let's get comfortably seated. Pull the flesh away from the sit bones, that slight tilt forward. Relax the shoulders, rest the eyes. Let that promote relaxation of the face. And close the lips. Relax the tongue and jaws and connect to the breath. And as we take a few moments, establishing that all important pranayama ujjayi. Taking the yana mudra if you so wish, remembering to bring the index finger thumb tip together, creating the circle of unity. <clears throat> Pardon me, extend the finger, the remaining fingertips out to the universe as points of receptivity for universal wisdom, sage advice. rhythm of your deeper breathing cyclically. We'll overlay that now with the shatali breath. <clears throat> so part the lips, extend the tongue, and inhale across the tongue. Retract the tongue, close the mouth, exhale through the nose. Five more of those. Returning to Ujjayi. Om Mani Padme Hum. May all beings be happy and may all beings be free from suffering. Welcome.
Logos by Mary Oliver. Why wonder about the loaves and the fishes? If you say the right words, the wine expands. If you say them with love and the felt ferocity of that love and the felt necessity of that love, the fish explode into many. Imagine him speaking and don't worry about what is reality or what is plain or what is mysterious. If you were there, it was all those things. If you can imagine it, it is all those things. Eat, drink, be happy. Accept the miracle. Accept, too, each spoken word spoken with love. Logos by Mary Oliver from her book, Why I Wake Early. Bringing the hands into Anjali Mudra at the heart explore the energy there for personal intent, establishing your sankalpa. Interlace the fingers, open the eyes, let's do our upper body warm up as we inhale to full extension and exhale, release, repeat. And third time for the stay, palms up, shoulders down, right allow upper body tension. And holding stationary, exhale, release to the fingertips and take your alternate shoulder shrugs. Inhale the arms out off the shoulders, exhale, lift into your twist to the right, shoulders up, down, wrap them towards the midline. And try to stay vertically upright in your trunk through the spine while you're twisting it. Keeps the low back safe. Inhale through center. Exhale, lift into your twist to the left. Again, take your shoulder adjustment. Feel that you're lifting into the twist. Inhale, back through neutral, full overhead extension, hinge at the hip joint, and exhale, folding into yoga mudra. Inhale, coming up, slide the hands into the hip crease. We want to stay long from belly to crown as we extend out of the legs in a semicircle <clears throat> movement for Sufi circling. Exhale, out over the right leg, center left. Inhale up, so think, think extension from low back through crown of head. Keeping your back and core muscles engaging and your supported breath. And then we reverse the circle out over the left leg, center right, inhale up. Two more. And back to neutral. All right, stretch out through Dandasana. Parallel the hands to the hips, relax the shoulders, and we'll do our quad stretching three times. Inhale, extend, and exhale, flex, lift. Repeat. And a third time. And sustain the flexion lift, shoulders relax, stay with the breath. Staying grounded through the left leg, let's cross the right over for foot stimulation. Spreading of the toes, fingers between, flex extend. Brace the ankle for rotation. And reverse. neutral, twist the upper foot away, inhale through center, exhale, twist back, back through center, extend through the left fingertips, interlock with the right, squeeze the upper foot, release and take your foot massage three times.
staying grounded through the left leg as you take your cradle to the right. And Velasana, the baby cradle. Inhale, release. Grounding through the right as you cross the left over. Foot stimulation. And spreading of the toes. Fingers between. Flex, extend. And brace the ankle. Forward rotation through the ankle joint. And reverse. Back to neutral, twist the upper foot away. Inhale through center, exhale, twist back. Back through center, extend through the right fingertips, interlock with the left, squeeze the upper foot. Release and take your foot massage three times. Ground it through the right leg as you set your cradle to the left side. And inhale, release. So that completes the upper body, lower body warm up. The uh, first part of the practice is all going to be on our backs in the supine position. So you need to make sure that you have your uh, bolster or pillow or blanket, whatever you're using to serve as a bolster nearby so you can reach it. And we're going to come up to the front edge of the mat <clears throat> into our bent leg position. And we're going to fire up the core as we roll down in stages. So start here with the arms paralleling. And then go back to about three quarters. A little bit lower and now we stretch out completely through Sukta Tadasana lengthening from fingers to toes roll your shoulders down on the mat exhale release the arms bend the legs and set the feet flat and we're going to take three L stretches inhale toes to the sky arms to the mat, navel into the spine, bend the knees, slowly release the feet, followed by the arms. Repeat, inhale, toes skyward, arms stretching onto the mat, shoulders releasing down, navel pulling into the spine. Exhale, release. And then inhale, for the third time we stay, Exhale, folding into either a variation of cannonball, hug the thighs in and gently rock through each side. Release the feet to the edge of the mat at a 45 degree angle. T the arms, relax the shoulders. On the exhale, drop your right leg down to the right. It automatically pulls the left along. Pause at the base. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, drop it to the left as it pulls the right along. Pause at the base. That's one. Do two more at your pace. Neutral, exhale, drop the legs to the right. Inhale, turn the head and neck to the left. And as we sustain the drop to the right and windshield wiper for a few breath cycles. Inhale the head to center, legs through center, exhale, let them drop to the left. Inhale, turn the head and neck to the right. Inhale the head, 
to center, legs back to neutral. All right, <clears throat> release the arms alongside, shoulders down, chin dropped. And we're gonna bring the knees together as we slide the feet to the edge of the mat into what is called the resting pose, sinking our weight into the support of Mother Earth, Gaia. And what we're actually resting here are the iliopsoas muscles that cross over from the iliac crest across the front of the hip, inserting into the inner pelvic region. And uh, these muscles are almost always in use. And uh, if we don't let them relax and lengthen out, they become tighter and tighter, shorter and shorter, tugging and pulling on the hip joint and the uh, upper pelvic crest and it can cause issues with the hips and the knees. So just let those muscles release, breathing deeply. separate the knees, bring the feet to hip width. Now, if anyone were to walk into the room while we do this next uh, pose, they would look at us and think, oh, those lazy yogis and yoginis just laying on their mat. But we're actually doing a very subtle, effective movement for releasing the sacrum and the lumbars. And it's called pelvic tilting. So it's kind of like a little miniature bridge. So we keep the arms anchored, chin dropped. And on the exhale, we press the tip of the tailbone as we tilt the pelvis down. And that lifts the small of the back. On the exhale, we press the small of the back and lift the tip of the tailbone. And we tilt the pelvis in this direction. All right, so that's one. Let's do five more. Moving with your breath. Inhale as you press the small of the back, lift the tip of the tailbone. Exhale as you press the tip of the tailbone and lift the small of the back. That's two. Take four more. neutrality in your position and keep the arms anchored and now we're going to take a half bridge as we roll up from the tip of the tailbone just to the mid back arms anchored chin drop inhale peel from the tip of the tailbone just to your mid back exhale roll down from mid back to the tip of the tailbone that's one take five more Again, let everything neutralize. And this time we want to pigeon the big toes to promote femur rotation towards the midline, preventing the knees and the legs from splaying out as we take the full bridge. If you let the legs splay out to the side, then that puts extreme pressure into the low back, which is not a good thing. So here we're going to roll up through the whole spine and stop the weight at the shoulder girdle not letting it transfer into the neck or the head. And we activate the arms. Inhale, peel from the tailbone through the vertebrae, stop the weight at the shoulders, extend the arms, lift the pelvis. Exhale, roll down from the shoulders to the tip of the tailbone and release the arms. And repeat. And 
third time for the stay. Variation of choice. I like the variation of driving the triceps into the mat, stretching through the fingertips, heels off of the mat, and then single leg lifts. Exhale, rolling down. And you can counter with the same or the other variation of cannonball. Hug the thighs in. And gently rock through each side. Inhale, release. All right, we're going to take the reverse swan or pigeon, also called eye of the needle. So from this bent leg position on the exhale, we cross the right leg over the left. Lift the left foot, drive the right arm through, leveraging elbow and bend of knee together. Interlock the hands behind the left knee. Allow the lower left leg to relax down. And on the exhale, slowly draw your legs in toward the chest. And you should feel the stretch intensity develop from your right glute through the right IT band toward the knee. Find that level of intensity that you can support with your deep, diaphragmatic breath. Realign so there's no tilting through the body. And exhale, cross left over right. Lift the right foot, drive the left arm through, leveraging elbow and knee. Interlock behind the right knee. Allow the lower right leg to relax down. And again, on the exhale, draw the legs in to your aha position for intensity level. Deep breathing. and let's stretch out through Supta Tadasana once again, spinal extension. Exhale, release the arms. Bring the legs, set the feet flat once again. And on the exhale, we're going to fold the left side into halfway. As we prepare to take our crossover twist. We're going to rotate the left knee to the left, hook the outer right quadricep with the left edge of the left foot. Press your knee down with leg strength as you tee your arms. Exhale, cross over into support to the right. Inhale, turn your head and neck to the left. Inhale the head to center, right leg to alignment, uncross, and exhale, fold your left side into half wind. Inhale, release. <clears throat> Realign. Exhale, fold the right side. Sorry, got to do one more thing. On the exhale, draw the left side back into half wind. 
Inhale, extend the left leg, interlock up the back. Exhale, head to knee. Head support with the right hand if you need it. And then you also have the option of lifting the right leg, extending it just off the hip and flex the foot. Bend the right leg, set the foot flat, roll the upper body down, and exhale, fold the left side into half lunge. Inhale, release. Again, realign so there's no tilting through the body. Neutralize the neck. Exhale, fold the right side into half lunge. Inhale, rotate the right knee to the right, hook the outer left quadricep, push the knee down with leg strength as you tee the arms. Exhale, cross over into support to the left. Inhale, turn the head and neck to the right. Inhale the head to center, left leg to alignment, and cross and fold the right side into half lunge. Extend the right leg to full length, interlock up the back. Exhale, head to knee, head support with the left hand if needed. And then you also have the option of lifting the left leg off the hip, flexing the foot. left leg, set the foot flat, roll the upper body down, and exhale, fold the right side into half lunge. Inhale, release. All right, let's fold up into full wind and take several sacral releases through each direction. So hands at mid shin are behind the knees. Exhale, hug the thighs in. Inhale, float them away. Take two more of those. Hug the thighs in, rock from side to side several times. And scribe in clockwise circles with the knees. And counterclockwise. Release the feet to the mat and inhale, stretch back through spinal extension. Relax the shoulders down, clasp the left wrist with the right hand. On the exhale, walk your legs out to the right, press or stack left on top, upper body, head and neck to the right. Try to keep the inner left shoulder and glute grounding. That creates the leverage to develop that deep lateral stretch through the muscles of the side body, the intercostals between the ribs. And of course, this is supine crescent moon or banana asana, the banana posture.
rise to center, upper body, head and neck, neutralizing through spinal extension again. Clasping left wrist or right uh, wrist with left hand. Exhale, walk your legs to the left, press or stack right on top. Upper body, head and neck to the left. And again, you wanna to try to keep the inner right shoulder and glute grounding. As we stay the pose, remember to stay focused on the quality of your breathing. It's telling you how the pose is reacting in your body and how you should adjust as we stay the position. back to center, upper body, head and neck, and exhale, release the arms, and let's float up into one of the variations of cannonball again, hug the thighs in, gently rock through each side. Inhale, release to the feet. All right, so now we'll set up for the supine baddha konasana, or the cobblers, and so this is where you'll need your bolster, or blanket or pillow. We cross the legs over, bring the soles of the feet together. They can remain down on the mat or you can draw them up onto the bolster with the legs. Arms can be in Shavasana, cactus position, or resting the hands to the abdomen. So just pick the one that allows your shoulders to release most effectively. Neutralize the neck and release into the support. Exhale, tuck and fold. And let's release our props and stretch one more time through Supta Tadasana. Exhale, release the arms, bend the legs, set the feet flat. Let the hips shift left as you fold into supported fetal to the right. Always sustaining fetal until you feel that everything is equilibrated. You don't want to make yourself dizzy coming up too quickly. And then on the inhale, we use the upper body strength to come up. And then we want to bring our bolster to the right end of our mat for the QL stretch. We're stretching a deep interior low back muscle that parallels alongside the base of the lumbars in the sacrum. And again, these muscles get compacted, shortened, and tightened with walking, sitting, driving, um, and we need to stretch them out or they can cause problems in the SI joint, the hip, and then anything down below them. So to stretch it effectively, we use this restorative pose. So we want to bend the right leg at a 90 degree angle, foot is flexed, and you want to maintain pressure of the quadricep into the length of your bolster. And then we align the left leg to the edge of the mat, making sure that our joints are aligned. Hold the bolster in snugly, 
We need to fully extend through the right side of the body onto the holster support. Rest the head onto the arm. Extend the left arm. Stack the hands. Maintain the stretch of the arms as you press the right thigh into the bolster. Mindfully rotate the left hip, knee, ankle to the left, seeking your edge. And you should feel that deep interior stretch, the lower right back just above the glute, and the whole side body is stretching for that matter. You can also do this posture on your bed and actually let your left leg hang off of the edge of the bed. And that will permit the QL, the quadratus lumborum, to stretch even more deeply. Exhale, rotate back towards the holster. Use the upper body strength to inhale your way up. And now we're going to set up for the reclining twist. We turn the holster <coughs> lengthwise, pardon me, still at the right end of the mat. I like to trifold my blanket and let it serve as a pillow for my head, but that's an option. We're going to tap the end of the bolster with our right hip and split fold our legs or you can stack fold them. And then parallel the hands on either side of the bolster. As we twist towards the bolster, we want to stay vertically upright from belly to crown. And you'll hit a twist edge where you cannot go any further. And then we, then we recline the right side into our support system. You can tuck the legs closer towards the belly button or further away, depending upon the intensity of the stretch you want through your left SI joint and QL area. Press the palms, engage the bundas, inhale your way up, and stretch it out through Nandasana. Temporarily release your blanket or pillow. And we're going to take the bolster onto the thighs, hug it into the abdominal area, and keep your legs in activation by flexing and grounding uh, the heels into the floor. Inhale, full extension. Exhale, hinge at the hip, elongate from belly to crown as you stretch over the bolster support. Arms can simply extend, tuck the chin to the bolster, or wrap the hands around the heels to further leverage the trunk forward. Hajimottanasana, east meets west, forward fold. Stretching through the fingertips, engaging the bundas, inhaling our way up, full overhead extension. <clears throat> Exhale, release into a shoulder shrug. Now we'll set up for the QL to the left. So taking the bolster right up to the edge of the mat. And then we <clears throat> create that 90 degree position with the left leg, parallel the right leg along the edge of the mat. Maintain that Snug contact between the thigh and the bolster. Full extension on your inhale through the left side. Releasing the head gently to the arm. Extend the right arm, stack the hands. Maintain your length through the upper body, pressure of the thigh and the bolster. Mindfully rotate the right hip, right knee, right ankle toward your right, seeking your edge in the posture.
exhale, slowly rotate back towards the bolster support. Inhale up with your upper body strength. And we'll reposition our props now for the recline twist to this side. Bolster is lengthwise now. Pillow or not. Tap the end of the bolster with the left hip. Split fold or stack fold the legs. Parallel the hands on either side. Lift into your twist until there's no longer an edge there to continue pressing. And then release that edge into your support. Adjust your legs as needed for your SI intensity. Exhale, stack the legs, <clears throat> press the palms, inhale your way up. All right, so we can release our blanket. And we're going to set up for the supported fish, Matsyasana. Now, as we kind of stretch the head and neck back behind the bolster, vitally important to keep your chin dropped toward your chest. <coughs> Excuse me. You can either, either release the back of the head to all the way down to the mat or to the block. So, uh, if you don't have a block, you can roll a towel or another blanket to support the head if that's better for you. The key component of this pose for safety in your back is maintaining active legs. So, we need to press them together maintain a stretch through the toes. That prevents the low back from decompressing. Hold the bolster tightly into the buttocks and then place the hands on top. Inhale, mid back onto the bolster. Notice how I keep my chin dropping. And then I'm gonna slide the shoulders, arms over the back edge of the bolster, lengthen the neck and re release the back of the head down to the mat. Notice that my voice is not constricted, neither is my breath, because I kept my chin dropped towards the chest. And if this is too deep through the shoulders, you can bring the arms up onto the bolster and rest the hands to the abdomen. Stay with the breath. Legs stay activated. Exhale, press the triceps. Now, if you have a weak back, you might want to fold your legs and simply release out to fetal through the right side. If you're working to maintain a strong back, press the triceps down, make sure the back and core are engaging. Drop the chin to the chest. Inhale up through Dandasana, full overhead extension. Exhale, release into a shoulder shrug. And then parallel the hands alongside the hips, flex the feet as we breathe and rest here in Dandasana, allowing the spine to neutralize. <clears throat> and release. All right, keep your bolster nearby. We're going to come up into classic tabletop, Chakra Vakasana. And do three reps of the dog, cat, puppy, ending with gate through each side. Setting the hand bandha, aligning the joints, energy pulling up through them. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the heart, dog tilt. Press the shins, tuck the toe, round the spine, cat tilt. Inhale, neutral tabletop. Exhale, sit back, hinge forward. 
stretch into puppy. Inhale, reset and repeat. Seated in puppy, shift the weight to the heels, then full upper body extension. From there, on the exhale, find your gate edge out to the right. choice depending upon your knee and hip joint flexibility points. You can take the supported child with your bolster or flip back onto your back and repeat the resting pose that we did at the beginning of the class where the knees come together and the feet are at a 45 degree angle towards the edge of the mat or at a parallel to the edge of the mat. <clears throat> For the supported child, big toes touch, knees separate to the edge of the mat. Draw the bolster between the inner thighs and inhale. Take a moment here to completely stretch your trunk onto the bolster support. Notice that I'm not lifting up. I'm keeping my weight shifting towards the heels to protect the knees. Once onto the bolster, head and neck can stay neutral or you can turn to one side and adjust the arms alongside to relax the shoulders. Sink into the support. Inhale the head to center. Exhale, turn to the opposite side. through center and stretch out through the arms and haul your way up and let's release our props. Now we're going to take a preparatory position for downward dog, curl the toes, sit back towards the heels, full upper body extension, tilt the chin to the chest. On the exhale become light out of the hands through the shoulders and the bent leg dog and take alternate heel drops. You're ready, ground your heels, deeply hinge at the hips as you press the upper body weight into the support of the legs. Exhale, walk to mid mat. And as we hinge at the hips into Uttanasana, our full, draw the arms behind and clasp one wrist with the opposite hand. Draw the legs or the arms rather, into the back of the legs. And let that leverage help you hinge more deeply and press more deeply into the fold. We 
release the hands to the mat, bend the knees, inhale your way up. Full standing extension through mountain. Exhale, release into a shoulder shrug. All right, let's move our props out of the way and come to mid mat and align our mountain. And we're going to take the toe balance three times. So we want to align our joints, find our twisty. Inhale, lift the heels. Pelvic floor core, fingertips up, shoulders down. Exhale, release. Repeat. Exhale, release. Now we're going to stay. Pasta Tadasana, our standing balance. Exhale, release. And next we'll prepare to take the standing gate flow. You can stay with feet and legs hip width or challenge your balance a bit more by pressing the inner legs and feet together. Interlock the fingers, press to the sky, and you want to maximize your length from the soles of the feet through the palms of the hand, hands, and try to maintain that length throughout the flow. Exhale, gate to the right. Inhale through center, and exhale, gate to the left. Back through center. Exhale, hinge and fold. Bend the knees, drop the buttocks. Inhale, full extension, lengthen, back bend. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, drop the buttocks. Inhale, full extension. Repeat, starting to the right. Starting to the right with Paragasana, standing gait. Exhale, release, and take a shoulder shrug. So for your inversion, you have a choice. You can take Viparita Karana, uh, the uh, Karani, <clears throat> the uh, legs up the wall or reverse waterfall if you have an open wall at home with which to take that pose. Or you can take the supported shoulder stand with your block. So I'll get you into both of those and you can choose which one you want. <clears throat> So you would take your mat short end up against the wall. I'm not going to move mine for the purpose of the video since I'm going to show you the shoulder stand as well. And then you want to saddle up to the wall, press the hip into the wall, release onto the back, and use upper body strength to stretch the legs up the wall. And you want to keep them in activation, flexing the feet, pressing the heels into the wall. Again, arms can be in cactus, shavasana, or resting to the belly. And then I'll bring you out when it's time through fetal position to the right. All right, so if you don't have a wall, then your choice is <clears throat> the supported shoulder stand with your block. So let's come back down onto the mat safely. And then bend the legs, and we'll set the block horizontally flat beneath the sacrum. Press the inner legs and feet together, drop the chin, anchor the arms, exhale, tuck, and inhale, lift.
Exhale, tuck. Inhale, release to the right of the heel or release to your feet. Release the block if you're in shoulder stand. <clears throat> and then if you're at the wall, inhale your way up. And then turn the face to the wall, bent leg position, wrap the shins and slowly exhale your way down. And then we'll all inhale through spinal extension once again. Exhale, release. Now it's time to prepare the back for a very comfortable Shavasana. So on the inhale, we're going to float up into Little Bear. Arms and uh, legs are limp above us, and we scribe sweeping circles inwardly. About six of them. And then reverse, outward circles. And scribing the infinity sign as best we can with arms and legs. Inhale, static crunch. Release and set up for Ananda Balasana, the happy baby. Mind your edge once found safely or rock from side to side. And back to neutral. Exhale, fold into wind once again. And this time we'll take six sacral releases through each direction, starting with front to back. Exhale, hug the thighs in. Inhale, release. Five more ear pace. Hug the thighs in, gently rock through each side. Again, six reps. And then six clockwise circles with the knees. And six counterclockwise. And release. Stretch the legs out to the V position. Let the feet fall to the side. Arms alongside, palms up. Shoulders up, down. Release them. Gently rock your head from side to side. And then let it fall into alignment with the spine. Tilt the chin to the chest. I always like to assume the Yana Mudra, which is our mudra for this week during Shavasana, but that's an option. Don't do anything that creates tension. And then sink into Mother Earth. Let yourself completely let go. Relax. Restore. Renew.
sensing your groundedness, taking a moment to reconnect to the physical body, wiggling fingers and toes, and reuniting breath with movement as you inhale the arms overhead, stretch from fingertip to toe tip, and on an exhale breath, slowly fold into supported heel to the right. Once sensing balance and heel, arise on the inhale and assume a comfortable seat. As we prepare to seal our practice. Om Mani Padme Hum, may all beings be happy and may all beings be free from suffering. Bringing the hands into Anjali Mudra at the heart, we'll seal with sending out our healing energy mantra Rama Dasa. Beginning with a deep nostril inhale. Rama Dasa, Rama Dasa, Rama Dasa, Om. Rama Dasa, Rama Dasa, Rama Dasa, Om. Rama Dasa, Rama Dasa, Rama Dasa, Om. Shanti, Shanti, Where there is peace in meditation, there is neither doubt or anxiety. And those are the words of St. Francis of Assisi. Ati Yoga, Anasasanam, now let the true teaching of yoga begin. And it is indeed an honor and a pleasure you chose to share part of your time and energy here this day. Namaste. So thank you for supporting my virtual classes. I can't wait to see you all back on the mat in the physical body as soon as possible. Until then, stay safe, be kind, and be well. Namaste.